हेलो एंड वेलकम फ्रेंड्स फॉर दिस पर्टिकुलर सर्वे मॉड्यूल इन दिस मॉड्यूल आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस यूज ऑफ चेन फॉर हॉरिजॉन्टल डिस्टेंस मेजरमेंट इन लैंड सर्वे as you learn the contents mentioned here you'll be able to use the metric chain for linear measurements in land surveying to calibrate the chain for its true length and identify as well as apply corrections for the linear measurements that you will be carrying out in fields so first thing is you have to understand about the various accessories that are useful for linear measurements while carrying out land surveys first and foremost task in surveying is to fix the position of the station in order to fix the position of the station the means that we use is peg it could be a steel peg it could be wooden peg which needs to be drilled in the ground and accordingly to present the particular station it is provided with small mark or sometimes even nail can be driven here what you see is wooden peg the bottom is sharpened to insert it in the ground usually height is around 15 to 20 cm as well as in order to fix certain intermediate stations we make use of some arrow which is created by making use of 4 mm 5 ms wire now as you see all such means may be arrow or peg won't help us to sight the stations from long distances hence the additional means that we use is nothing but ranging rod usually this ranging rod is 2 to 3 meter in height and it is colored with alternate black and white strips bands or otherwise red and white bands so that it would be made up easily seen from the longer sides as well as in order to take certain offsets we make use of rod very similar to the ranging rod which is called as offset rod we have to be very particular because here as we are dealing with a height of 2 to 3 meter we have to be very particular about the verticality of the ranging rod as well as offset rod so the popular means that we have is nothing but plumb bob here as you see this particular rod is held in the perfectly vertical manner by making use of plumb bob while working on the field you how to fix the stations sometimes even the in the stack of grass and bushes so at that time what are the station that you will be placing may not be easily seen so in order to make it accessible visible visible we try some peg like thing it is some kind of stick which is 0.80 to 1 meter high it is provided with a slot at the upper edge so that we can insert some white folded paper in that so as you see here whatever the content whatever the reference that you want to put up on that particular paper can be easily put up so that even in that particular background you will be able to see the station easily and the related matter we 
make use of number of category of the chains essentially we have to use this particular chain and tape for linear measurements and usually chain is preferred means in the preliminary category of the surveys like reconnaissance as far as indian scenario is concerned this metric chain could be available in 5 meter 10 meter 15 meter 20 meter or 30 meter in length its construction and lengths are standardized by is 1492 1972 some other category of the chains are also available which are named as gunter chain it is also called as surveyor chain here this is created by making use of small pieces each having length of 0.6 feet such small pieces are called as links and overall length of the chain is of 66 feet this particular chain is used or used to be used for old category of the surveys it is very useful because the convergence are suitable for this the way you see here this 1 mile is equal to 8 furlongs equal to 80 chains similarly 1 acre is nothing but 43560 square feet which is equal to chain square here the other category of the chain is engineers chain which is also 100 feet long but here each link length is of 1 feet third category of the chain is revenue chain which is having length of 33 feet which has some 16 links each of 2.6025 feet as far as today's scenario is concerned still metric chains could be used for reconnaissance work but gunter surveyor chain engineers chain revenue chain etc are nearly obsolete let's try to understand the construction of the metric chain here this chain consists of number of the small pieces as i mentioned earlier which are called as links that links are manufactured by using 4 mm via ms wire and such links are connected together by making use of three circular shaped rings the way you see it here the first portion the first link as it consists of the handle which is usually brass handle and it is provided with certain v groove as well as the graduation which is depicting its exact length is bit shorter but as we include the handle and this particular end link and subsequent one and half these particular rings it will be giving us length of 20 cm here this chain is useful to have its length when it is fully opened and fully stretched as we have to read the fractions and accurate readings some intermediate portions are also provided with some preferences the way you see here this is called as tally mark so if the chain has got length of 5 meter tally marks are provided at every 1 meter length whereas if the chain is 
more than 10 meter in length these particular tally marks are provided at every 5 meter usually for 20 and 30 meter metric chains in case of the chains of length of 20 to 30 meter small brass rings are also provided at every 1 meter length so as to have the intermediate fractions read in the right part what you see is nothing but the actual photograph of the chain here this is end link which is shorter the way i mentioned earlier but as we include the length width of this particular handle the initial link length will be of 20 centimeter and here what you see the actual arrangement of this particular circular shape rings on this particular handle what you see is nothing but the graduation which is depicting the length of the chain when it, ha it has to give when it is fully open. What you see here is nothing but swivel type of the joint which is provided in between the first end link and this handle. It facilitates the independent rotation of this particular handle irrespective of the position of the links. As we discussed the calibration process and standardization for surveying equipment, the process can also be employed for standardization of surveying chain. In reality, chain is very sturdy it can be dragged through rough terrain but as you saw it comprises of number of links which are connected through the circular shaped rings links are also 4 mm fire ms wire so sometimes as we drag the chain through rough terrain it may get bent even the link may get warped, the joints may get open, sometimes the links may get elongated and because of that we do not get the actual nominal or designated length of that particular chain. Hence, the calibration and adjustments need to be done very frequently. As we discussed previously, Calibration is nothing but the comparison between the known magnitude measurement chain. Sometimes we can make use of invar or steel tape also in order to compare the designated length with and accordingly here this particular chain which is under test can be calibrated. This particular calibration can be conducted in the office hence it is said to be official or it could be done in the field in order to do it in the office or officially we compare it with some brass blocks or it can be some permanent blocks fitted in permanent platform for every meter length whereas on field we construct some standard gauge with some standard steel or inhal tap to measure the distance in between. Here the field process that we adopt as mentioned earlier employs this standard gauge. So as you see here there are various cement concrete blocks which are placed at some 5 meter center to center in between the length of 5 meter can further be graduated with 1 meter markings by making use of steel tape or invert tape the way I mentioned earlier we are expected to have that particular standard tape applied with tension of 80 newtons and we expect that particular devices 
standardized at temperature of 20 degrees centigrade or otherwise according to the manufacturer's specification. In 20 meter length, there is permissible error of plus or minus 5 millimeter, whereas at 30 meter length, the permissible error is of plus or minus 8 millimeters. It should be also seen that as we wish to apply check for every 1 meter length, the accuracy should be lying within plus or minus 2 mm. As I mentioned earlier, these links are connected with three such circular rings. The way you see the joints are open, these links may get bent. Hence, in order to adjust its lengths, straightening of the links, replacing of the rings or closing of the joints could be done in actual field conditions by using simple tools like hammer or so. It should be seen that while replacing the rings or straightening the links, it should be done symmetrically on either side of the midpoint. Otherwise, intermediate distances that we wish to measure, the fractions that we wish to measure could be erroneous. Usually, the terrain we wish to work is always undulating, but we can treat it to be flat when the slope is 5% or less. We wish to mark each station with peg as well as in order to make the stations visible from the longer sides, ranging rods should be placed at each of the ends. The use of the arrow already we have discussed, it needs to be inserted at intermediate distances in order to present the intermediate position of the chain covered. Usually, distance measurement involves two persons. One is rear chain man, also called as follower, and head chain man, also called as leader. The follower is experienced surveyor. He is responsible for the measurements. He notes down the results as well as overall he guides the head chain man to make sure that the consecutive measurements are made exactly along the straight lines between the stations. The overall process of the measurement of the distance and marking the stations intermediately in between the given stations. The process is called as ranging. So the procedure that we follow, let's start at A, station A, drive the peg exactly at the same point, drive the ranging rod just adjacent to the peg. The follower places the starting end of the chain against this particular peg. The leader taking bunch of arrows walks away in the other direction of the station with the handle one with the handle in his hand. The leader stops when the chain is fully stretched and he lays down that full length on the ground. Now, the follower is expected to give the instruction to the leader to occupy the correct position. It is expected to have some hand sign signaling, say for example, one can make use of the left hand to move on the left over side. Similarly, one can make use of right hand to move on the right side. When the correct position is hard, the follower simply raises both the, of his hand and accordingly here 
the leader will come to know that the position he has attained is correct and accordingly he places the arrow at that particular point the follower immediately notes down the measurement now as both hold the chain handles both chain men move forward along the straight line keeping the chain well stretched the follower stops at the intermediate station which is fixed by the leader earlier and he places the handle of the chain against it now as leader is moving in the direction of the b as the chain is fully stretched he occupies some position the way he occupied at station o she will be acting according to the instructions given by the follower accordingly he will be placing the second arrow to indicate the point exactly lying on line ab and accordingly here he moves further the procedure is expected to be repeated to till both reaches the final stretch of the station at the end of the station at the end of the station the total distance is given by number of arrows placed by the leader which are subsequently collected by the follower as he follows the movement of the leader so at the end total distance d is given by number of arrows collected by follower multiplied by the chain length plus this fraction measured the fraction measured could be in consideration with tally marks the way i mentioned earlier placed at 5 meters brass rings placed at 1 meter or 20 cm link lengths as the process is completed one can achieve the accuracy of 1 in 500 to 1 in 1000 the process that we discussed about the chaining on the flat ground can also be adopted to measure the distance on sloping ground the way you see here station a and b are placed on certain slope so here we cannot measure this particular distance in the straight manner from a to b and present it as horizontal distance the way we described in earlier presentation so here what you see is the follower will be attaining the position very similar to our earlier process at a leader will lead with the portion of the chain he will stretch it in the horizontal plane so that so that the point which is had in the horizontal plane can be correctly transferred as a2 vertically by making use of plumb off as such what you see is the total distance is measured in number of parts this process is called as breaking the chain the fractions that are broken could be summed up and accordingly the horizontal distance ab is expressed even we can work out the distances by making use of certain indirect means so in this method the sloping distance is measured along the survey line and later converted into the horizontal equivalent using 
geometrical conditions. The method would be very useful if the slopes are quite long but regular and gentle. This can be done by making use of three methods. First one is by measuring angle of inclination with respect to the horizontal, by measuring the difference of the levels, by making use of hypotenusal allowance. So here what you see is nothing but by making use of angle of inclination. So here what you see is nothing but this is the sloping distance. It makes inclination of alpha with respect to the horizontal. We wish to have capital D. The distance actually measured is L. Hence, the horizontal component capital D can be expressed as L cos alpha. The inclinity can be measured by making use of clinometer, abnormal level or some such similar angle measuring equipment. We'll be discussing about the construction and uses of such clinometers, abnormal level, etc. in our subsequent presentations. Second indirect method makes use of difference in reduced levels. So here as you see, A station and B station is separated through vertical ordinate of this particular H. Here the sloping distance is capital L. So this particular horizontal distance D can be derived by making use of this capital L and H as square root of L square minus H square. The third method is hypotenusal allowance. So here let's try to understand the actual process that we follow. Here the horizontal equivalent of the total distance that is the chain length plus hypotenusal allowance is equal to one chain length. The chain is stretched in the direction of AB and is placed in advance of the end B in advance of the end B of the chain by an amount equal to BC which is called as hypotenusal allowance. The next chain starts from station C. The process is continued until the end of the line is reached. The required horizontal distance is equal to the number of the chains that are measured. In order to understand that for hypotenusal allowance, let's understand the content over here. Let alpha be the angle of the slope of the ground. Let's assume that we are making use of 20 meter chain for the distance measurement. So here this AD or AB when horizontal should be equal to one chain comprising 100 links. So here let's you have to keep in mind that each link length is of 20 centimeter and it is kept constant whatever may be the chain length maybe 20 centimeter 20 meter or 30 meter and that's why here as we make use of 20 meter metric chain here it comprises of 100 links. Thus, this AC is 100 sec alpha links. We wish to have the hypotenusal allowance applied in advance by amount equal to BC. Here this BC is nothing but AC minus AB. So here this AC is 100 links and accordingly here as we work out this particular BC as AC minus AB it can be worked out as 100 into bracket sec alpha minus 1. The quantity 100 into sec alpha minus 1 is known as hypotenusal allowance. There could be lot many errors that may occur while chaining the distances. 
which could be in compensating nature or the errors could be cumulative in nature. Here, some of the compensating errors are holding and placing the arrow. So, I hope you remember that we expect the leader to place arrow when the full chain length is led. And subsequently, the follower picks up that arrows. So, while holding or placing this particular arrow, if certain mistakes are made, which could be positive or negative in nature, and that's why it could be compensating in nature. There could be some straightening and sag involved. So, the quantity could also be positive as well as negative. And hence, here the error is compensating in nature. The variations in climatic conditions, elongation as well as contraction because of the rise and temperature increase because of temperature rise or reduction could be again causing these compensating errors. While working on the undulations as well as varying slopes, the errors are compensating in nature. Sometimes the chain could be shorter than its designated length because of the bending of the chain links or warping of the links or because of the opening of that particular joints, the, the actual link length, the actual chain length may be more than what it should be and hence here the chain could be too short or too long. Even sometimes we may not be aligning the chain in the correct manner. So accordingly here it may cause the cumulative error. As well as because of the variation in standardization it is quite probable that certain errors could be cumulative type. So, whenever there is an occurrence of this particular systematic errors, we need to get the correct horizontal distance. If the major distance is more than the true distance, the error is positive and hence the correction to be applied would be negative in nature. Similarly, if the major distance is less than the true distance, the error would be negative and hence the correction to be applied would be positive. We have to apply the correction for standardization as well as for slopes involved with the terrain on which we work. So, the first one is correction for standardization or its absolute length. So, here absolute length or actual length is not equal to nominal, standard or designated length. Here, this terminology should be kept in the mind. Chain has nominal length which is nothing but standard or designated length. In certain conditions, say immediately after its standardization, it has to give its full designated length. But as we use it, as we stretch it, as it gets shortened because of the wear and tear with the time, we have to carry out this particular standardization. So, here if the actual length, if the actual length is less than the standard length, chain is said to be short. The major distance will be more than the true distance and hence the error cost will be positive and hence we have to apply the correction in negative manner. Similarly, if the nominal length is more than the 
standard length. The chain is said to be too long. The major distance will be lesser than the true distance. Hence, the error will be negative and the correction has to be positive. Here, this particular standard error can be worked out by making use of this expression. Here, LM stands for measure distance, LS stands for actual chain length, this LN is nothing but nominal length, so as we work out this particular expression, as we make use of this particular expression, will be able to work out the correction for standardization. Second one is correction for slope. So, as the distance is not measured along the horizontal plane, and if it is measured along the slope, it needs to be corrected for slope. The slope correction is always negative. That is, the distance as measured along the slope would always be more than the actual distance as we have to reduce it in the horizontal plane. Here, the correction will always be negative in nature. As we mentioned earlier, here such kind of a correction is required when the slope is more than 3 to 5 degrees. Here, before applying this particular slope correction, we have to apply correction for standardization and then the error for the slope can be worked out as the LM into bracket 1 minus cos alpha. So, I hope the concepts that I tried to put up here are clear to you. Thank you for your attention. In the next presentation, we will discuss about the construction and calibration of surveying tape. As well as, we will also discuss about the variety of the tips that are employed to measure the horizontal distance. The way we discuss the slope correction and standardization correction for the check in the similar manner, we will also discuss the correction to be applied for tip. So, by till then, I wish you very happy learning. Thank you.